Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 1207 of What She Up To Now. Documenting my journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and a little bit back and forth. Doing a little bit back and forth in 2021. 2020 was an interesting year for me and everyone else on the planet. 2021 started out a little bit worse even, but it's uh, May now. It's starting to open up. Uh, at least in in many areas of the country, uh, I just had my first multiple week trip in well since 2019. The last trip I was on was a cruise in December. It was a, a an informational training cruise, so not just fun, but fun and learning. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat is really bleh today. Uh, it was a fun and learning cruise in December of 2019. That's the last trip I was on. Then after that. I came home, got COVID, heaven knows how, because supposedly COVID wasn't in Wisconsin then, then come to find out months later, months, months, months later, that yes, indeed, it was in the United States, could have been in Wisconsin, could have been on the cruise, could have been anywhere uh, that I was exposed to some kind of germs that turned out, and of course, they weren't testing for COVID-19, but based on the symptoms and reports and what's going on, i 100% sure I had COVID-19 in 2019 huh it's called COVID-19 had it in 2019 uh, but got to go on a, a, a multiple week trip went through about 10 different states many of them in the south where things are way different than they are here in Wisconsin and Minnesota so it was a refreshing uh, very optimistic very reassuring trip to me because it reaffirmed to me that people in the United States short of politicians and the media are absolutely 100% normal and they're the same American that we've always been amazing hard-working patriotic positive uh, optimistic honest hard-working human beings it's just our politicians and our media that are causing this rift in our nation and causing uh, it and making it look like America is, is off the rails but America's leadership might be off the rails, but Americans are 100% on the rails doing what they should do. Now, I didn't spend much time in big cities, so maybe it's different there, but it's definitely America is still America, and I found that very reassuring. I'd like to do a, a podcast on that. I think I might uh, because it was reassuring to travel around the country. I think we've been cooped up in our homes, at least I know I have been, for far too long not interacting with other people in an attempt to make us afraid of one another but we're absolutely positively not afraid of one another so it's kind of a wake-up call to our media and our politicians to get their heads out of their nether regions and uh, start treating us the way we deserve to be treated because it's totally unacceptable off the topic totally today I want to talk about happiness and by the book happiness was the topic of our annual challenge this year do one thing every day that centers you we talked about happiness for a couple of days yesterday we talked about consuming happiness and that we don't have any right to consume happiness if we're not creating happiness same as wealth we don't have any right to expect wealth to come to us unless we are producing wealth and producing value and wealth and abundance and money is just an exchange of value so we have to put out in the world what we want to get back in the world and that applies to everything not just wealth not just happiness but love generosity um, peace peace of mind everything we want to achieve in our lives success you know fame and fortune we have to put out into the world in order for us to receive that back uh, that is a a universal law and I'm not sure how many people actually have any idea what the universal laws are I know I didn't discover universal laws till I was well into my adulthood years probably my 30s and 40s before I even knew that there was such a thing as universal laws and I'm like how do we not know this as human beings it's like parenting how do we not have ways to learn how to be an awesome parent we all and now there's some books and things written on it and you can search it out and you can look it out for the most part human beings don't come with a training manual or a how to raise great humans manual and I, I think that that's missing in our in our world and in our lives and we need to have a operation of ourselves manual. so I'm really focusing on that this year with our do one thing every day that centers you I knew I wanted to to continue becoming a better person a better version of myself and part of that is being centered and focused and 
calm and rational and and able to view myself from an outside perspective, which is a big challenge for me and many of us, but I'm working on that with this annual challenge. Uh, so we talked about happiness, and our idiom for supersize your business was by the book today. Now, by the book came from Swearing on the Bible, as well as Edgar Allan Poe um, actually is credited with creating the current meaning of by the book, which is, you know, you're doing things exactly according to directions or what you're told or the rules or the laws. You're obeying everything and just doing what you're told. Basically, doing what you're told and not thinking for yourself, which is the opposite of what I personally believe is that you can do what you're told, but you always have to think for yourself and make sure it's aligned with who you are or you probably shouldn't do it. I mean, you might find yourself in an organization that tells you to do things that are wrong, immoral, illegal, unethical, and against the law. And it's up to you to decide if you are going to be part of that organization and let go of your morals and values and do those things or not. You're always 100% responsible for doing that. So I just shared the definition of by the book, some examples. I didn't really talk much about how it's been in my life. I kind of forgot to do that. And I'm thinking about it now. I always think of, you know, it's like when you get in a, a stressful conversation or a serious conversation with somebody <clears throat> or a fight or an argument with somebody and they say all these things and you're like, dang, I wish I would have had that comeback. And, you know, five minutes after it's over or 30 seconds after it's over, you wish you would have said or done something differently and you know the exact perfect thing to say. Well, it's like that whenever I do my Supersize Your Business video. I do it and I do it. It's kind of like impromptu. It's kind of like improv, actually. Every day I look up an idiom, what it means, where it came from, and then I share that with my Supersize Your Business group. And it, the reason I do it is it gets me, number one, thinking on my feet, practicing videos, looking at what things mean, and reminding me that what things mean to me, the experiences I've had with them, might be entirely different and probably are entirely different than everyone else on the planet. And so it reminds me to have a bigger, broader perspective of what we say and do and how we communicate and the effect that it, what it means to me might be totally different than what it means to someone else. Because we forget that in our everyday communication. That's why we have disagreements and arguments with other people. It's usually it's a miscommunication. I remember with my ex-husband, most of our arguments were always over I said something that he took a different way than I meant it, or he said something that I took a different way than he meant it. Uh, and so communication is key. It's another area I'm working on this year. Communication, uh, confidence, because we always need to continue to work on our confidence, and then doing one thing every day that centers me. Those are kind of my annual pushes this year, along with, of course, the get up and go challenge. I've done it twice this year. Uh, I don't know if I can wait to do it till August. I might have to do one this summer or a couple shorter versions of it because I really miss it when I'm not doing it. I finished it up at the beginning of my travels and then I didn't do it during my travels, which was a nice relief because I could focus on the things that I was doing um, while traveling. But I realized how much I miss doing that segment and producing that content every day. So I, I said I would wait till August to do it, but it might, it might show up in June or July. We'll see. I've got some big commitments in June and July, so I might I might say nope. I'm gonna stick. I, I always stick to my commitments, so I I've committed to things that I have to do that might make my time so tight that I don't feel like I can do a good service to get up and go challenge. So I probably will wait till August, but my heart is like I need to be doing this. So maybe what I'll do is I will produce a book on get up and go challenge. Um, and, and actually write that book instead, because I've been gonna do it for, I don't know, five years, <laughs> and, and haven't done it, because I was, you know, I wanna say ferreting it out, but I wasn't ferreting it out. I just think it gets better and better and better every time that we do it, so I like to always continually improve and make things better. Uh, <clears throat> so, Supersize Your Business, all about you, 365 day challenge, and other projects and commitments that I'm working on. Boom, 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 both online and off. I've got several groups that I'm working with um, and coaching through different projects that they're doing, which is my favorite thing to do, um, is help people with their big picture perspective and their direction and their, their, their goal, identify where they are right now 
and where they want to be and then start moving them toward that in not just little bitty baby steps, although we do partly little bitty baby steps, things you can do every day to get there, but what are the, the giant steps? What are the quantum leaps? What are the big things we can do that will make a, a huge move in the first place to keep us motivated toward working toward those big goals? Because we don't achieve anything unless we work for it. I don't know who uh, started teaching people, and maybe it was the personal development industry, I don't know what, maybe it was social media that supercharged the belief that if you just wish it, it will happen in your life. Well, the, you have to have the idea initially. You have to wish and want and desire something, but nothing happens out of thin air for us. We have to put forth some energy and effort to create the things that we want in our life. And I think we do people a disservice when we tell them, hey, you can just think about something and you're going to have it pop and magically appear in your life. Does that happen? Miracles happen all the time. Will it happen for me or you? Probably not. So I'm going to work for it to make sure that I achieve the things that I want and have the impact I want in the world. So what I'm thinking about today, I still have catching up to do from traveling. So I'm going to sign off and say, have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, hit me up in the comments or direct message me. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Have an awesome day. Bye.